this is a very, very tragic story. This um, 12-year-old kid was gunned down Saturday night in his home in Philly. I want you to take a look at these uh, short clips real quick. And I'm going to come back and give the rest of my commentary. And some of you aren't really going to like what I have to say. Some of you that have sense will probably like what I have to say. Check this out. 12 year old's neighborhood, his mom said he was a good kid. He loved sports, he loved engineering, he volunteered at church. He also helped save a neighbor's life, but overnight, someone took his in his own home. They dimmed the light on me when they took my son away from me. Y'all dimmed my light. Y'all dimmed my light. Dark days ahead for Lisa Clark and her family. Her 12 year old son, Sadiq, shot and killed at home days before Thanksgiving. I'm disgusted that yes. somebody would come she's to my door late at night and shoot him. Yeah. They was knocking on the door and they was yelling his name, Sadiq, Sadiq. Overnight, Lisa says a bullet hit her son as he looked through the glass on the front door. The family doesn't know who pulled the trigger, but says it sounded like an adult. Philadelphia police don't think Sadiq was the target. Detectives returned to the Frankfurt neighborhood Sunday afternoon. They spoke to neighbors and tried to track down surveillance video. We're going to find y'all. As a neighbor asked for justice, Sadiq's heartbroken mother composed herself long enough to talk about her second youngest child. He helped people when they grow up. He helped the churches. He helped everybody. A neighbor says the preteen helped save his life during a medical emergency. That day I passed out on the sofa. He went and got everybody and got my uh, got me back they got me to the hospital because of him sadiq is now one of the city's 435 plus homicides a 36 percent spike compared to this time last year philadelphia city councilman kenyatta johnson calls the shooting unacceptable and frustrating 12 years old he didn't get a chance to see his life and so it's unfortunate we also want justice though for that young man's family no arrest yet. No one in custody. Police found a gun cartridge on scene, but haven't said if it was from the weapon used. Live at uh, police headquarters in Center City, I'm Brandon Hudson, NBC 10 News. To an arrest. Action News reporter Bob Brooks has the latest tonight. You can tell by the turnout, by how many people here cried, and by the pain that was shared. 12-year-old Sadiq Clark Harrison was loved. They took him. They, they took him like he was nothing. I just cried. There's no one should feel this way. One, two, three, one, two, three, Sadiq. The vigil for the 12-year-old was held at his home in the 5,000 block of Dittman Street in Frankfurt. It's also where he was shot and killed around 3 a.m. Sunday morning. His family says he was home with his grandma and nine-year-old sister. That's when police say someone knocked on the front door. Sadiq went to answer, and as he was walking to the door, a bullet flew in and shot him in the head. His family says he was targeted. They called his name. Yeah. Let's call it what it is. It's not a homicide. It's an assassination. Yeah. Yeah. Called his name and just went straight through the window and killed him. His mother, distraught, spoke briefly tonight. Y'all took my son. Y'all called his name. Y'all knocked on my door. And at this point, investigators only say they're working hard to figure out who did it. They're also offering a twenty thousand dollar reward for information that leads to an arrest. When we have. All the facts, when we know all the truth, uh, we will be in a better position to comment. After the vigil, Sadiq's aunt spoke with us. He was a baby. All he did was play games. She also says she hopes real change is made in her neighborhood. I think it's time for us to get that 9 o'clock curfew back. A mandatory 9 o'clock curfew. Okay, now you heard from his family. They're asking for anyone out there that knows anything about this to please reach out and call the Philadelphia police. So I'm going to go in depth in this story. It says Lisa Clark pointed to the shattered glass of her front door pierced by a bullet that killed her 12 year old son, year old son on their Frankfurt home early Sunday. She said they shot through there, pointing to the glass arch at the top of the door. Her son was shot when he looked to see who was outside after someone knocked on the door and called out his name, she said. Clark, who was 36, said she was out on a date at the time but was sent a video from her 10-year-old daughter who was home at the time with her son Sadiq Clark Harrison and the children's grandmother. She said her daughter videoed me and showed me Sadiq laying in the pile of blood, Clark said. 
She says she came here crying on the front porch of her home on the 5,000 block of Dittman Street. When she went inside, she said she seen her baby lying on the floor, tried to do CPR, but it was too late. Her son was pronounced dead by medics who arrived at the home. Police said the shooting happened about 2.50 a.m. Sunday and officers found the boy lying on the living room floor suffering from a gunshot wound to the forehead. No arrests have been made and the police did not offer any new information on the shooting or say whatever they believe the boy was targeted or not. One 9mm fire cartridge casing was recovered at the scene. Clark, however, said she believed her son was targeted. They had to know him to call him by name, she said. She said Sadiq was sleeping, but her mother woke him up when she heard someone calling his name outside. The only people at the home was Clark's 73-year-old mother, her 10-year-old daughter, and Sadiq. She said her mother described the sound of the person outside as an older guy's voice. Clark, who has five children, says Sadiq, the youngest of her four sons, was in sixth grade at Warren G. Harding Middle School. He said She says he loved riding his bike, loved playing with friends, and she said as she hugged a jacket of his that she found on the porch. He also played football and was a wide receiver for the Frankfurt Chargers youth team. As she wept, she looked at the photos of him as a baby, a toddler, and a preteen taped on the red bricks of her row house. One paper tape to the wall said, I love you, little Deaky, so much, and described him by the letters of his name as successful, amazing, determined, excellent, exciting, and kind. She says, why, my baby, she cried out loud. Neighbor Latoya Andrews said that she heard the gunshot early Sunday when she was upstairs in her home. Her 13-year-old daughter heard a knock on the door, she said. He, she, Andrew said he was a nice kid. He was mainly just out here fixing bikes, playing with his friends, including her three daughters. In a statement by the school district, he says, We are deeply tanned by the passing of Sadiq Clark Harrison. We extend our heartfelt condolences to his family and everyone in the Harding School community keeping all who know and love Sadiq in our thoughts and prayers in this difficult days ahead. And says Clark's family and neighbors held a vigil Monday night for Sadiq outside of the home. Now, this has been an ongoing problem in our community. In Philadelphia this year, and we're not even done November yet, where over 400 murders, 400 homicides in the city of Philadelphia. And you know what most of them happen at? Most of them happens in the inner city. You know, you have a group of conscious, pro-black, woke YouTubers out there making videos Always talking about white supremacy, always talking about, you know what, we need to go to Africa because we need to escape white supremacy. Here's the thing. You don't see over 400 hate crime murders a year in this in, in the city. You don't see that. On average, you might get a few. But we have a big problem. And it involves our own. Because you have savages in our own community going out here and taking, shooting a 12 year old boy in the head for what? For what? And my question is, why was he targeted? Why was he targeted? Now, I'm not blaming the mother for this. I don't know what went on. But. My question is, was his father involved with something? Where was his father? Was his father doing something that he had no business doing? Somebody caused this little boy to be killed in his own home. And the boy didn't even make, make it to the hospital. He was shot in the head and died instantly.
this is an ongoing problem in our community and then you'll have people in the conscious community that will say well is the white man's fault white supremacy is the cause of this this is why everybody want to blame white supremacy for this but this is not a white man doing this no white man went out there and killed this 12 year old boy white supremacy does not make you go and pick up a gun and go kill somebody it doesn't And see, here, here's, here's the thing. We will sit there and go back and forth with each other. We will sit there and attack each other. We'll sit there and be jealous of one another. We'll sit there and kill somebody because she got he got the better looking girlfriend or the better looking boyfriend. But you will not go at these quote unquote white supremacists who are sitting there calling you names, disrespecting you and whatever. You won't go after them, but you'll come after everybody else. And I did this video because I was tired of seeing these YouTubers. Oh, some of them will talk about it, but some of them will be nice about it. Some of them will be kind about it because they, they don't want to ruffle fetters. They'll be kind. Well, you know, it's wrong, but, you know, white supremacy has a big di No. And if anybody that blames white supremacy for this, I don't take you. I don't take you a bit seriously. The community needs to go out and they need to handle this. They need to find whoever did it and they need to turn them in or, or whatever. Because to sit there and take out a 12 year old innocent kid who was 12 years old, didn't even see, live to see 13 innocent who loved going out there, riding his bike. Come on. But you want to sit there and say white supremacy is the biggest problem. The white man isn't going out here killing four or five hundred people in the inner city every year. They're not doing that. And if they're doing it, I want you to show me the proof. I want you to show me hardcore facts, not just sitting there, you know, trying to have an agenda, trying to put your own conspiracy theories out there. I don't do conspiracy theories. I want to know the hardcore facts of where is white supremacists going out here, taking out these kids, innocent kids. I want to see it. Now, are you doing the KKK's work? Yeah, they loving this. Oh, they're loving it. Because they ain't got to do your dirty work because you're doing it on your own. So they sitting there every time this happens, they sitting there celebrating, they taking out there and we ain't got to worry about it. But you want to sit here and want to blame the white man for this. Because that's what some people will do. They'll, they'll blame an imaginary white man for this guy's getting killed and it is wrong. One uh, lady said that they should be in some type of curfew. There should be a curfew. Should be a, a 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock curfew. Because back when I was growing up, and it wasn't even that long ago, when we was coming up, we were young teenagers in the early to mid-2000s. Okay, we can go out. You know, we didn't have... We've walked certain places. We walked certain places. We didn't have to. Uh, we didn't have to sit here and worry about getting shot. Yeah, there was still violence in the community, but it wasn't as much as here now. I wouldn't dare walk in, in the city after seven o'clock right now. Because two thousand four to two thousand ten or eleven, you can do that. Like I said, there was still stuff going on. There was still things going on. But it was far and few in between. Now, you walk in the hood or uh, inner city, you may not come out. This is how bad it's gotten. And many people can say you can blame it on COVID-19, but this is not COVID-19 related. This was somebody who was targeted, and I want to know why he was targeted. And I'm not blaming the mom. I am just want to know who would target this boy. 
what went on behind the scenes that this boy got targeted. Who owed who what? I want to know. Leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this video. And for more videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.